Hello there and welcome back to a Star Wars story. Thank you so much for watching and remember to like and subscribe to let YouTube know that the Force is strong with this channel. Today we are looking at the Ones, or otherwise known as the Mortis Gods. The Ones were a family of Celestials, a race of exceptionally powerful Force wielders who lived on the planet Mortis during the Clone Wars, led by the father, the son, and daughter who are the embodiments of the dark and light side of the Force, respectively. The son and the daughter were worshipped as the twin deities, or simply as the spirits in the Night Sisters' religion. Originally, more than a million years prior to the Clone Wars, the Celestials' mysterious beings who were thought to be capable of restructuring space on a massive scale lived in the galaxy. According to Therat, the oldest of the Killic Hives, the Ones are what the Celestials become. Thurut distinctly remembers the Ones coalescing out of a geyser on an unnamed tropical planet. There were three of them, the father, the son, and the daughter. They gained these memories from the son and daughter themselves, who joined the hive mind briefly to help coordinate the construction of Center Point Station. It should be noted that the collective memory of a Killick hive does not make distinctions between fact and fiction like the human mind. Any individual memory joined to that of the collective, be it mythology, incontestable fact, or the plot of a holodrama, is history to the Killicks. The ones initially lived in peace and harmony in the home they made for themselves near the side of the geyser. The father warned his children to never drink from the font of power or bathe in the pool of knowledge. However, they eventually disobeyed his orders, with the son drinking from the font, giving him the power of the dark side, while the daughter bathed in the pool, bestowing on her the power of the light side. The siblings then claimed areas of the jungle for themselves and started to fight each other, while the father tried to keep the peace between them. A young woman somehow came to their world. She initially became the servant, serving and catering to the one's needs. However, she eventually became the mother, doting on the father and succeeding in mending the relationship between the daughter and son. She also managed to persuade the son to use his destructive nature for a constructive purpose by using his force lightning to carve new rooms in the walls of the gorge where they lived. However, she was still mortal and as a result she grew old and was no longer able to keep the peace between the siblings. The ageless children started to resume their fighting and neither the mother nor the father were able to prevent it. One day, while the three were fighting in the courtyard of their home, the mother snuck a drink from the font like the son did and quickly bathed in the pool like the daughter. The father pulled her out with the force, but it was too late. She ceased to be the mother and became Abeloth, the bringer of chaos. Abeloth attacked both the son and daughter, forcing them to bow down to her. The father then stepped in to save his children, afterwards taking them and leaving the planet stranding Abeloth behind. The daughter and son then obtained the help of the Killix, such as the Thurit Hive, by joining with their hive mind and lending them their power in the force. Sharing their knowledge with the hives, the siblings directed the creation of Centerpoint Station, Sinkhole Station, and other devices to help create and maintain the Maw, which imprisoned Abeloth. Afterwards, the father moved his family to the monolith-gated planet known as Mortis, so that he might control them and keep the Force in balance. Through it stated that when the current of the Force was altered and the flow of time changed, Abeloth was able to escape. She would stir up conflict and destruction each time, sending the galaxy into chaos and disorder, thriving on fear, death, and havoc, until the son and daughter returned to the Killix, and together they would re-imprison her. This cycle would repeat itself periodically for hundreds of thousands of years. Approximately 24,500 years before the Battle of Yavin, the dark sider known as Zinder journeyed to Mortis and met the Ones. However, he believed their claims on the nature of the Force had no more or less legitimacy than the teachings of any other Force group. When the Father brought Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano so that he might verify if Skywalker was the foretold chosen one as prophecy held it, 
the son attempted to kill his father with the dagger of Mortis and remove him as an obstacle to escape from Mortis. However, the daughter sacrificed herself, taking the blade for her father and causing the balance of the force to come undone. The son made another attempt to kill the father shortly afterward, but was shocked when the father suddenly stole the dagger and stabbed himself with it, weakening the son so that he could be killed by Skywalker. Moments after the son's death, the father himself died, disappearing into the force. With this, the ones were destroyed, and Mortis itself disappeared in a flash of light, leaving the Jedi returned to mere moments after they encountered the monolith, with no evidence that the planet or its inhabitants had ever existed. During the return of Abeloth, 44 years after the Battle of Yavin, Grand Master Luke Skywalker read the mission report in the Jedi archives about his father and his mentor's experiences on Mortis. Combined with the information gathered from the Thurret Hive, Luke realized that his father's refusal to become the new Keeper of the Balance had in fact set off a disastrous chain of events. With the death of the Ones, the galaxy began to slide into chaos. The number of conflicts in the last 65 years were evidence enough of that. When Jason Solo fell to the dark side and became the Sith Lord Darth Cadus, in an effort to change the course of the future, he inadvertently set in motion another chain of events which culminated in the destruction of Centerpoint Station and the release of Abeloth. With the ones dead, Abeloth was free to continue her rampage of chaos and destruction. After Abeloth's defeat at the hands of Luke and Darth Krayat, Luke believed that the Jedi and the Sith must become the new ones. They must keep the balance themselves. In the release of Star Wars The Clone Wars The Complete Season 3 Blu-ray, during the featurette of the episode Ghosts of Mortis, Dave Filoni explained how Darth Brevin and Darth Bane almost got into the episode. Since George Lucas was looking for two ancient Sith Lords that could bring some meaning, like an upper evil influence guiding the sun. But that at the end, George Lucas retracted this decision due to how the Sith interact with the Force. Therefore, the scene with Revan and Bane wasn't possible. Dave Filoni also explained the importance of George Lucas's intensive involvement in this arc due to the extensive relation with the different aspects of the Force that it has and how important it was for him and the crew to get all of what was presented in the arc right. To quote Dave Filoni, he says, It gives you an insight to the detail which he gets into these issues with the Force and this concepts of the bigger spiritual aspect of Star Wars. He's very involved, George, and to be honest, the writers and I feel very strongly when we are bringing this type of episode to screen that George has to be more and more involved because we have to get this stuff right. And everything we do, I mean, you know, we have to get this stuff right because this is the Force. This is the whole ball game. Thank you so much for watching. Above all else, and most importantly, stay safe, take care of others, and remember that the Force will be with you always.